We've certainly got a quarterly Christmas surprise this time. An unexpected profit, along with several other surprises, makes this one one of the best quarters in history. This is Tesla Tidbits episode number 556 for October 28th, 2019. This show is sponsored by my supporter, Richard. If you're in the market for a new Tesla, please consider using his referral code. Ask your salesperson to use code Richard174 or go direct to the web link ts.la slash Richard174 and pick up a 1,000 mile supercharging credit for your new vehicle. It was a day like any other for me on Wednesday until my phone started blowing up with Twitter alerts after the release of the investor letter. I was on my way home from work when it dropped and my oh my, was it epic. While it was not a record profit, it was certainly up there. Tesla reported a $143 million gap net profit, maintaining a 22.8% gap automotive gross margin. Tesla finished the quarter with $5.3 billion worth of cash on hand and notched its second straight positive quarter for free cash flow, tallying $371 million to the good. This is just the tip of the iceberg on the good news, though. Both Model Y and Gigafactory Shanghai are ahead of schedule. On the Gigafactory front, trial production has begun, and on the Model Y front, production is expected to begin by summer next year. On the lesser reported energy side of the house, Tesla deployed 477 megawatt hours worth of storage, and solar growth was up 48% quarter over quarter. Finishing off the letter, Tesla looks forward to the future, reiterating that they are, quote, highly confident in exceeding 360,000 deliveries this year, end quote, and that they continue to expect to be gap profitable and continue to realize positive free cash flow going forward, with the potential exception of when they launch and ramp new products. Tesla switched up the investor letter to more of a PowerPoint deck, and I really like the change. Included were several photos from Gigafactory 3, showing the stamping press, body shop, paint shop, and general assembly, each showing work actually being done to build a Model 3. They ended with a side-by-side picture of the infamous mud pit, followed by a picture of the staff at the factory just 10 months later, ready for production work. With the letter out of the way, let's get to the main event, the earnings call itself. Elon kicked things off as usual with his opening remarks. First of all, I'd like to just thank the Tesla team for an incredible job this quarter. The execution was outstanding and um, on, on just about every front. So um, it's uh, just an honor to work with such a great uh, team. Uh, Q, Q4, Q3 was uh, obviously a very strong quarter. Uh, we had record deliveries. Uh, we were able to uh, make great strides in controlling our costs. Uh, we shifted back to gap profitability while also generating strong free cash flow. Um, and again, this would not be possible without um, each uh, employee doing their part to reduce cost. Our operating cost is now at the lowest level since Model 3 production started. Uh, regarding Gigafactory Shanghai, this month we started trial production at um, Giga Shanghai and have built uh, four vehicles from uh, body to paint to general assembly. Uh, so this is a, I want to emphasize, this is a, a real factory with a tremendous amount of equipment in it. Um, while a lot of people see the, the outside shell of the factory, which is enormous um, and was essentially uh, underwater uh, in January. It was uh, below the water table, literally. Um, what, what is, I think, much more significant is that we're able to install uh, massive stamping machines, uh, a fully operational paint shop, and a, and a sophisticated general assembly line uh, in the same period of time in, in parallel with building the building. Um, I'd like to thank our China team for this extraordinary achievement. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm not aware of any any factory of, of this magnitude in history being uh, constructed in such a short period of time, uh, approximately 10 months. Um, as, as far as I know, this is unprecedented. Um, and, and Gig Factory Shanghai will become our template for future growth. Um, we're planning to build Model Ys in Shanghai as well, of course, um, and to build a Giga Factory in Europe. And we hope to announce uh, the location of that Giga Factory. In fact, we will announce the location at Gigafactory before the end of this year. Uh, regarding Model Y, uh, we're also ahead of schedule on Model Y preparations in Fremont, uh, and we've moved the launch timeline from fall 2020 to summer 2020. Um, th- there may be some room for improvement there, but we're, we're confident about uh, summer 2020. Uh, I've actually recently driven the Model Y um, release candidate and think it's going to be an amazing product and, and be, be very well received. I, I think it's quite likely to, I, I might, this is just my opinion, but I, I think it will outsell S, X, and 3 combined. Um, regarding version 10 and Smart Summon, 
Last month, we re released our latest uh, software, version 10, which includes video streaming, games, uh, karaoke, Spotify, and, and uh, a host of other new features and improvements. Uh, most importantly, it includes uh, the first version of Smart Summon, which has now been used uh, uh, a million times. Uh, so it's now over a million uses of Smart Summon. Um, and we're, in the next uh, week or so, we will be releasing an improved version of Smart Summon, taking into account all the data from those million Smart Summon attempts. So it's, um, this really illustrates the value of having uh, a, a massive fleet um, because it allows us to collect these corner cases um, and uh, learn from them and use fleet learning and become uh, rapidly better, just as Navigator and Autopilot did on the freeway. So we ex expect a, um, an, a number of improvements in Smart Summon in, in, the, in the weeks to come. It, um, and, and this is really just the beginning as we collect more data and Autopilot and full self-driving functionality get, get better. Um, I, 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 I do... While it's going to be tight, I, it, it still does appear that uh, we will be at least in limited in, in uh, early access release of a feature complete full self driving feature this year. Um, so it's not it's not for sure, but it it appears to be on track for at least an early access release of a fully functional full self driving by the end of this year. Um, and. Um, yeah, lastly, we're, we're highly focused on decisions that really make a material difference to the company, uh, such as opening um, gigafactories in uh, other continents. Uh, you know, it's, it's worth noting that these, you know, ultimately having three gigafactories effectively will triple our, our output. And then when you consider uh, increased output per gigafactory, it's going to actually more than triple uh, our output over time. Um, and then uh, there are a lot of interesting things happening with respect to advanced batteries and more efficient powertrains um, and pulse of driving and all that sort of stuff, but uh, that will be something for a future time. Um, and then one, one last item is that uh, tomorrow afternoon um, we'll be uh, releasing version three of the Tesla solar roof. That's the integrated solar, where the, where solar, uh, the solar panels are integrated with the roof. Um, that's, um, I, I think this is a, a, great, a great product. Version, version 1 and 2, we're still sort of figuring things out. Version 3, I think, is finally ready for, for, the, for the big time. Um, and so we're scaling, scaling up production of the version 3 uh, solar tile roof uh, at our Buffalo Gigafactory. And we, I think this product is going to be incredible. But we'll talk more about that on the official product launch, which will be tomorrow afternoon. Kudos indeed to the Tesla team. The last quarter was a record for deliveries as well, but a bomb on the profitability front. As Elon notes, they definitely did work on the cost reduction side to get things where they need to be. Though as Zach Kirkhorn noted elsewhere in the call, getting away from some negative one-time charges definitely helped. Elon gives us a hint at a very quick turnaround on an improvement for Smart Summon thanks to fleet learning and its million opportunities to learn. This again is another huge moat that Tesla has over its competitors. Nobody has the fleet in the world that Tesla does, and thus nobody can learn the way that Tesla can. I will be curious to see the step change on this one. I think most of us saw the videos of the absolutely unusable version 1 of the feature, then the first revision, and then everyone's certainly seen what we have now. The updates were orders of magnitude more useful each time. I am super excited to see what we get from the neural nets getting a crack at it. Speaking of neural nets, Elon, rightfully, very, very cautiously said that feature complete full self-driving would be available in early access before year's end. I would put money, there's no way this happens. I love Elon, but his timeframes are bad as is, and his autopilot timeframes have yet to be anywhere approaching accurate. For the latest example of this, just look at our last topic, Smart Summon. You might see this in Q1. Maybe. Elon later clarifies, just to be crystal clear, what feature complete for full self-driving actually means. Yeah, by feature, compl feature complete, I mean it's able, the car is able to drive from... Um, uh, from one's house to to work, um, most likely without interventions. Um, so it will still be supervised, but it will it, it will be able to uh, drive. Uh, um, it, it will fill in the gap from 
uh, low speed autonomy, uh, you've got low speed autonomy with some, you've got high speed autonomy on the highway, and we need intermediate speed autonomy, which really just means track lights and uh, stop signs. Um, so, um, uh, feature complete means it's, able, it's, it's uh, most likely able to do that without intervention, without 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 uh, human intervention. But it would, it would still be supervised. Um, and the, and I've gone through this timeline before, I think several times, but it is often um, misconstrued uh, that there's there's like there's there's the three major levels to autonomy. There's um, the car being able to be autonomous but requiring supervision and, and intervention at times. That's feature complete. Then there's, um, uh, and, and it doesn't mean like every scenario everywhere on earth, including every corner case. It means most of the time. Um, and uh, th then there's an, a, another level, which is that we think it's, that, that from a Tesla standpoint, we think the car is safe enough to be driven without supervision. Then the third level would be that regulators are also convinced that the car can be driven um, autonomously without supervision. Those are three different levels. We now get to delve a bit into the energy side of the business, which I don't cover as much as the automotive side, but I feel like it will be every bit as important as the automotive side at some point in the medium term. Pay particular attention to the last comment that Elon makes after cutting off the director that was talking. As you can see in our quarterly deck, our solar deployments uh, rose by almost 50% over last quarter, and our energy storage deployments, which include power walls and power packs, uh, grew by 15% to an all-time high of 477 megawatt hours. Um, in the last three months, we relaunched Tesla Solar in North America by simplifying our solar offering into three sizes of small, medium, and large, with transparent pricing on the website. Uh, actually, actually, if I yeah. may interject, sure, uh, sure. uh, yeah. but the, a lot of the, what, what a lot of people don't realize is in, like in, in California and in, in a number of other states, if you, um, if you buy, buy our sort of solar subscription or solar rental, um, there's no money down and you instantly save on your utility bill and there's no long-term contract. Right. Um, so it, it's kind of a no-brainer. It's, it's really, do, do you want a, 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 something that prints money? Um, and if it doesn't print money, we'll fix it or take it back. It's kind of a no-brainer, um, and it, 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 it sort of plays into Tesla's overarching strategy here, which is effectively to become like a giant distributed global utility. Tesla's overall energy strategy is to become a giant distributed global utility. With the solar rental program that just began, that certainly makes a lot of sense. We'll see exactly how successful and profitable that turns out to be soon enough. With everything going on in California right now with intentional blackouts, I'd have to think they have a rather huge market that will be clamoring for the product quickly. That ended the sort of monologue portion of the call where the Tesla execs got their feelings on the quarter off their collective chests and brought on questions from the public. First up is the staggering amount of revenue yet to be recognized from full self-driving. Tesla patted itself on the back and allowed itself to receive $30 million worth of that revenue since Smart Summon was finally released to the public. But there's still a pile of that cash left sitting there that's unrecognized. Because an investor wanted to know some information about gross margins, and there was a distinction involving this number, we got to hear exactly what it was. Turns out, it's a big one. Um, I, I mean... <laughs> Our, our cash gross margin is obviously is, is higher than our gap gross margin because of unrecognized revenue associated with FSD attach rates. So um, that, that's why there's, I think it's in the order of 600 million or, or in the order of half a billion, 500. Half a billion of uh, unrecognized revenue. Uh, so so if, you, if you were to in, include that, um, which would obviously be recognized as we um, release the uh, full self-driving functionality, the actual gross margin that we're operating on, on a cash basis today is higher than the gap gross margin. So, half a billion just waiting to be available to be used once full self-driving is feature complete. Sounds like Tesla has a very big reason to be highly motivated to complete that feature. That number will only grow as people purchase the feature and they continue to defer that revenue. It's entirely possible that this could grow to even three quarters of a billion dollars before they ultimately recognize it, which would almost certainly assist in notching the most profitable quarter in the company's history by a long shot. Next up, we get to hear Elon speak briefly on the acquisition of DeepScale. Sure, the DeepScale is a very tiny company. Um, you know, it was, it's basically um, about twelve people. 
Um, and it's, uh, they have some expertise in increasing the, uh, um, um, the, the, the efficiency of neural nets for a given amount of, of compute, uh, which I think is, is helpful. Um, so, you know, it, it remains to be seen, but the, the intent behind it, what was a, a, a very tiny acquisition um, was to, uh, I think, slightly accelerate FSD. Um, uh, that that's the intent, and hopefully that will t- turn out to be true. Yeesh, rolling out the welcome mat on that one there. I may be reading more into this than is actually there, but my reading between the lines on this one came up with Tesla making this acquisition more to keep competitors from picking up their knowledge than actually needing the company. Could be way off base on this one, but the way that Elon reacts here downplaying the acquisition, I feel like I'm at least in the zip code. We had some attempts to pull new info out of Elon. We had some attempts to pull new We had some attempts to pull new info out of Elon for future products, but as usual, he's like Teflon when this happens on these earnings calls. You can't stick anything to him. But that didn't prevent us from getting this quote about the pickup truck. Um yeah, we we we, we don't I think we've said enough about the the Tesla Cybertruck. We're not going to this is not the right forum for us to do product launches. Um but I think it'll be what will we'll be I mean, my 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 opinion, and this could be totally wrong. It could be totally out to lunch here, but uh, I think the Tesla Cybertruck is our best product ever. Best product ever is high praise, considering the stable of vehicles that Tesla has. I really, really, really hope he's right on this one. I know that we have Elon, whose best quality is his ability to tell people no, much like the late, great Steve Jobs, as well as a world-class designer in Franz von Holzhausen, and the pair have not steered us wrong yet in the styling department, but that teaser image, along with Elon's comments about it being like something out of Blade Runner, really have me nervous, as I've already made known a while ago. I said recently on Twitter that a company like GM can afford to have a product flop. Tesla cannot. While the truck isn't one of the infamous bet the company moments that we've heard about, it certainly could have an unintended major negative impact if this design is too out there. Speaking of that lineage of great design, those of us Model S and Model X owners just got a bit of a wet blanket thrown on us by Elon. The, the Model S and X are, are, are really niche, they're really niche products. I mean, they're, they're very expensive, made in low volume. Um, to be totally frank, we're keep we're, we're we're continuing to make them more for sentimental reasons than anything else. They're 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 really of of minor importance to the future. Oh, Elon, you're breaking my heart. I mean, I get it. We all know that Model Three is the straw that stirs the drink for the company now. But as a true car company, you need a full range of vehicles, which would include a full size sedan and a sports utility vehicle. There are definitely people that will still want to buy those classes of vehicle, and seeding those buyers to gasoline-powered vehicle manufacturers certainly isn't advancing the mission, even if the profit made on the Model S and Model X isn't as important as it used to be. Lastly on this earning call, another over-the-air update brings a welcome power and efficiency gain to the whole fleet. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention, we're also expecting that that, that there's there's going to be an over-the-air improved that, that will improve the uh, power of the Model S, X, and 3. That's, uh, by, by the way, it's just it's coming in, in a few weeks. Um, it should be on the order of um, 5% uh, power improvement uh, due to um, improved firmware. Drew, do you want to say anything on that? Uh, yeah, we just continue to learn how to optimize the motor control in, in our products. And, uh, yeah, so 5% improvement for all Model 3 uh, customers and uh, 3% for S and X. Yeah, and there's also the, the single-pedal driving Yep. Uh, that's that will improve the range as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Very excited about that. It's gonna it's an improvement in comfort and feel. Uh, the, yeah, it just makes it's easier to drive and it improves the range. Yes. Um, and faster supercharging. Oh, and faster supercharging for uh, yeah. standard range and standard range plus customers, which is a, a big deal. For them. Yeah, it's uh, this. I don't think there's ever been a situation in history where you buy a car and it gets way better over time just due to mm-hmm. software. Like, not a little bit better, but a lot. Uh, it is, uh, yeah. Very exciting. I, yeah. I think, yeah, as a customer myself, I, I, I enjoy these updates. I always look forward to them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might, might move the 
Model S range to almost 380 or three, high 370s um, with, with the update. I'm pretty sure none of us will ever complain about range and power added after the fact. And with that, that brings this show to a close for the Q3 2019 earnings call. I posted a special version of this show to the Patreon site exclusively that contains the full earnings call, as well as my real-time commentary over the top. I kept it out of the standard feed, as that recording was over an hour long, and I didn't want to stuff that into all of your lineups unexpectedly when the whole genesis of this show is based on brevity. If you're interested in hearing it, it is available for free. Just head on over to patreon.com slash Tidbits to give it a listen. Speaking of that, I am pleased to welcome my newest supporter, Charles Fox, to the fold. And as always, a special shout out to all the super patrons supporting the show at the $10 plus level. They are Drew Schuyler, Ryan Scarborough, Lee Sweet, William Henry Crew III, Dorian Steve Guberman, Joey Boots, Ralph and Cheryl Waterhouse, Adam Raymer Brown, Megawatt Photovoltaic Development, Todd Sullivan, Mitch Long, Zortec LED Canada, Morvin Og, Blake Thompson, Raymond and Deborah Malkowitz, T Sportline, Travis and Cheyenne Rush, Chris Hobus, Craig Murphy, Vicky Kirk, Ricky Johnston, Bien Concepcion, Nathan Garza, Paul Goena, Ed Patterman, and Sunil Joseph. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits and use the hashtag AskTeslaTidbits if you'd like your question to be considered for the show. Until next time, keep it charged and hit the road.